from the first line to the final deco cut. It starts and ends with it, the swivel knife. To swivel means to turn around a center point in order to face in another direction. In the case of this tool it simply means that it's a knife mounted on a pivot. Before somebody managed to build a pivot in the knives, the leather world used something like this, an incision knife. Here you can see some excerpt from a video about incision knives by my friend Serge Wolken, as known as Bigfoot. I link this video and recommend everyone to have a look at it. Serge explains wonderfully the advantages of this knife and nothing has changed in these advantages even in the times of ultra-modern, technically perfected swivel knives. With the incision knife the blade is held and guided in a simple way, just like a normal pen. It's precisely this handling that makes it still so interesting. While handling the swivel knife often causes cramps in the ball of your hand, with the incision knife it feels more natural. No wonder, after all we've been used to holding and guiding a pen since our childhood. But time goes by and the next step was the modern swivel knife. Such a tool is available from many different manufacturers. But what do you have to know about it? First of all the construction is basically the same for all swivel knives. On top you have a support for the index finger, the yoke. The force that is required for cutting is applied to this point. All other fingers are only used to control and stabilize the knife. Then there is the neck, which simply can be described as a long rod. With the help of this rod the overall length of the knife can be adjusted to your personal needs. The next component would be the barrel. These barrels are available in a wide range of variations. Sometimes they are rubberized, sometimes they are made of wood. Ergonomic shapes are also available. In most cases, however, the barrels are made of metal with a more grippy surface. This non-slip finish is called knurling. This knurling gives the fingers the grip they need to guide the knife. The barrel is also designed to hold the blade. An important but invisible part is hidden here. The bearing or the swivel point. With cheap knives the neck is simply inserted into the barrel with a simple plug connection. That works and why not? However, better ones have a ball bearing in this area and that is perfect in terms of friction reduction. If you are about to buy a new swivel knife, invest a little more money in a ball bearing one. It's the current state of the art and the additional financial costs are really limited. So it's time to talk about the most important part, the blades. If you take a close look at such a blade you will immediately notice the unusual flat angle of the cutting edge. But this flat angle has a purpose. The aim of a swivel knife blade is to only cut the leather surface and not to cut through it. With a steep angle as we know it from normal knives the user would lack a lot of control. But still the blade of your swivel knife must always be sharp. Without sharpness no cut. Without a proper cut there is frustration and frustration can be avoided. Therefore the most important tip before I show you which blade types are available out there, please learn to sharpen your blades. This is not witchcraft and it's essential to your leather work. Back to the blades. There are basically two types of blades. Those with a straight grinding and those with a hollow grinding. If you ask three people which one is the best, you will get five answers. Does the hollow grounded blade really have advantages? Let's take a closer look at how a blade like this cuts. Here you can see some detailed pictures. You can clearly see that only the tip of the blade, which is the widest part, dips and cuts into the leather. And how do we usually cut? Correct angled with exactly this wide section of the blade. So in normal use a hollow sharpened blade has no mechanical advantage over a straight blade. The blade would only make sense if you want to cut really thick leather deeply. Then the blade would work like a plow. It cuts first with a narrow hollow part and then it will divide the leather in a v-shape. Usually one cuts with the tip of the blade. Excessive deep cuts don't really bring advantages. You will get the desired depth in your tooling project later while you are beveling. Which blade to buy? For me it's just a matter of taste. Blades for swivel knives are available in many different variations. The most common is this standard blade. 
These blades are available in different widths and thicknesses. The narrow and thin blade are intended for the finer work or narrow curves. For really filigree works, but also for thin deco cuts, we also like to use these angled blades. These ones are also available in different sizes. Each manufacturer has his own philosophy which blades they offer. Apart from the normal ones, special blades are also offered. For example, such a hair blade. This blade has many closely spaced cutting edges. It is used when working, let's say, on an animal portrait to cut the hair structure. Another example of, of such special blades are these double-lined blades for even parallel cuts, often used for borders and decorative edges. As you can see, there are countless variations of blades. Most of the blades on the market are made of steel, or better, specially hardened tool steel. As with all knives, hardened blades are used to keep the sharpness as long as possible and to withstand the mechanical stress. Even if the blades look very similar on the outside, the differences are often in the details. The blades of the Leather Wranglers company are made of a special steel alloy. These blades react much less with the tanning agents than blades from other manufacturers. According to Paul Zalazak, blades made of normal tool steel have the problem that new crystalline structures are constantly forming on the surface of the cutting edge. The metal oxidizes and that makes the blades dull. Here you can see two pictures of an electron microscope. On the left you can see the surface of a normal tool steel blade which has a clear Nearly uneven surface due to the oxidation just mentioned. These, let's say, pimples will slow down the knife. Such a blade never glides through the leather as soft as butter. On the right a blade from the Leather Wranglers company. It consists of a alloy that oxidizes much less and less oxidation means longer lasting sharpness and less polishing. As you can see there are no crystalline structures here. Count a series of tests were necessary to develop this blade. And then there are these individual blades, these hand-forged beauties. These are blades that are completely handmade. The combination of carbon steels in Damascene style and hand-forging led to a very fine material structure. This is followed by careful hardening and etching to emphasize this unique and beautiful look. Such blades are not only practical and of high quality, but also a feast for the eyes. Craftsmanship like this is rarely found anymore. As an alternative to metal, there are also blades made of ceramic. Similar to the popular kitchen knives, according to the manufacturer, these blades do not have to be resharpened, but they also do need to be polished on a regular basis. And that is not as easy as it is with steel blades. They are also delicate. The steel blade can be sharpened back into shape at any time if it has ever fallen to the ground and gets damaged. But if a ceramic blade falls to the ground, well, you may have two or three of them. Ceramic blades have their advantages, but in my opinion a well-sharpened steel blade can easily keep up. There are also differences in the shape of the blade shaft, the part of the blade that is inserted into the swivel knife. There is no binding standard, so you cannot expect that a blade from manufacturer A will necessarily fit into the swivel knife from manufacturer B. For example, the blade that fits into Barry King's barrels do not fit in the widely used Tandy swivel knives, and vice versa, of course. And the Leather Wranglers company goes in a completely different direction. Their blades are flat, but both Barry King and Leather Wranglers offer the blades also in the, let's say, standard version, the 5.5 diameter. You just have to pay attention when buying them. Such a swivel knife spends a lot of time in your hand, and that's why it should be perfect for you. Swivel knives can be adapted to the size of your hands. The overall length can be adjusted by either pulling the neck out or pushing it deeper into the barrel and then fixing it with a locking screw, as you can see here. The finger rest cannot be adjusted. Although there are a lot of different styles available, choose one that feels just right for you. Also important is the diameter of the barrel. Some manufacturers offer their swivel knives in several sizes. Small, medium and large diameters are often offered. As a buying recommendation, the longer the fingers or the larger the hand, the thicker the barrel may be. What are you going to find out there? I have already mentioned that there are a huge number of different swivel knives on the market. First of all, there are the no-name knives without ball bearings. These cheap ones are included in many starter sets. 
you can get such knives for less than 20 bucks. One step above there are knives like the Kiyoshin Pro, Craft Japan or other comparable low budget products. They only cost a little bit more, but they already have everything that a proper swivel knife should have. The next level are the swivel knives that Barry King produces. For a really fair price you get a tool from one of the most famous leather tool manufacturer. There is a lot of experience in this knife and you can see and feel it. And then there are swivel knives from the Leather Wranglers company. Remember? The guys who make the blades out of that special steel. This company, specialized in knives, produces swivel knives in different price ranges. They also stand out from the crowd when it comes to the design. These are really excellent knives that leaves nothing to be desired. But if you're looking for something special, you will also find it here. Leather Wranglers also put up individual pieces next to their serial models. Customer requests. Here you can see Paul, the owner of Leather Wranglers, at one of his machines, giving the last finishing touches to one of his barrels. Precision in every detail, you can see and really feel it. A perfect little SKB barrel. And now two fetishists must be strong and have to control themselves. Such masterpieces are handmade as individual works from the finest Damascus steel. Precious woods complete the overall picture. And of course with ball bearings. Technically right at the front and visually unbeatable. A dream. Of course custom made on request. If you want an exclusive look in addition to a perfect cut, you should look out for this swivel knife. The Michael Dubert Manufactory produces these beautiful masterpieces from the finest materials, craftsmanship in perfection. Almost a piece of art. You can see there are many knives of different quality levels. Which one you buy depends on your preferences and taste, but not least of all, of course, on your budget. Otherwise swivel knives are like any other tool, which result you achieve while working with it is only to a small part due to the tool. The most important factor is you, the operator. So as always, one thing remains clear at the end. Only practice leads to perfection. In the information text below, I've placed a few links to the dealers who sell the swivel knives I've shown here. More information about leather carving can be found on my channel, which you can subscribe to by clicking this button. And don't forget to activate the bell, then you won't miss a new video. For today, that's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.